Two of the most powerful tools in Lightroom are the basic adjustment and the tone curve. However, these tools are only truly effective when used in combination with each other, as they're far less impactful when used individually. And at a first glance, these tools seem to perform the same functions, right? Adjusting your shadows, highlights, blacks, whites, to correct exposure and to add contrast to your image. So in today's video, I'll demonstrate how and why these tools behave differently I'll also be pulling quotes from the Adobe website to provide factual proof rather than just relying on my personal opinion and experience. Additionally, I'll show you how I use these tools to enhance the dynamic range of my RAW files to achieve the tone and contrast that's similar to film. And at the end of the video, I want to provide an advanced bonus tip demonstrating two methods for adding color contrast to your image, an easy way and a far more advanced way. I'm confident that even if you are an advanced editor in Lightroom, you'll learn something new here today. So let's jump right into the explanation of the roles of the basic adjustment panel and the tone curve, why so many people get this wrong, and then we'll jump onto the computer for some hands-on examples. It may be obvious for some, but when exposing an image, I typically decide whether to expose for the highlights or to blow out the highlights to expose for the shadows. Some lighting conditions are very soft, providing neutral exposure that allows me to capture detail in both the highlights and the shadows at the same time. The same consideration applies when editing. Do you want to retain the shadow detail or do you prefer to hide elements within the shadows by sharply falling them into your blacks? The same goes for the highlights. Sometimes I'll intentionally blow out the skies because the detail in the sky distracts from the subject, especially on overcast days when there's not much interesting texture in the clouds, therefore I generally just blow out the clouds during the editing phase. Or do I want to maintain the detail in the highlights and the shadows while achieving a pleasing tone and contrast that aligns with how our eyes see the world rather than just creating an HDR looking image. To apply these techniques you first need to understand how tonal adjustments work. So the basic panel is for exposure and white balance. You adjust the overall image tone scale using the tone controls in the basic panel. While the tone curve is designed to fine tune the tonal scale using the tonal curve panel to correct and add contrast resulting from these tonal adjustments. So in short, adding contrast is the key phrase here. When you lift the black point in the tone curve, you're removing the blacks, not recovering detail. In contrast, when you lift the black slider in the basic panel, you recover detail in the darkest part of your image while also lifting that black point. You can make develop module adjustments in order, but a common approach is using these panels is to start at the top and work down. And that's definitely my preference and the way that I look at it for better understanding is that I consider the basic adjustments as a first layer. Everything I move or adjust here affects the raw file directly. The tone curve acts as a layer on top of the basic adjustments, meaning that whatever I do to the tone curve does not directly affect the basic adjustments and only adds contrast, while the basic adjustment panel affects everything. So let's jump onto the computer for a visual demonstration demonstration on why this works and then followed by how I use these tools to get my tone and contrast. Alright guys, I just want to quickly show you the difference in recovering the detail in the basic panel for the shadows and the highlights and then adding that contrast back in with the tone curve compared to trying to recover this detail in the tone curve and then adding the contrast back in with the basic adjustments. Again, these two tools may seem like they do the same things, but in reality, they're different. So this is an image I took recently in Melbourne. Now I haven't edited this image, but I have cropped it and I also have deleted the number plate for privacy reasons. Now remember what I said about earlier, think of this as your first layer and then this is your second layer. So whatever you do here affects both layers and then whatever you do in the tone curve 
doesn't affect your raw file data or your exposure. And to demonstrate this and to show you how powerful the basic adjustments is, if we just simply just drag down our highlights and lift up our shadows, pay close attention to this histogram up the top, which is called the global histogram, and also down in our tone curve histogram. When we make an adjustment, both histograms move. But when we make an adjustment, say we want to pull up the exposure here, this histogram doesn't move, but this histogram up the top does. So if I move this again, you can see that it's only affecting the one histogram. While well, if I come up here to any one of these dials, so say exposure, I pull it and move it, it moves the global and also the tone curve. So after moving our highlights down and lifting our shadows, we have recovered the detail in our shadows and highlights, but we have resulted in less contrast in the image and everything's looking a little bit flat. So all that I do is I just add a simple S curve, pretty generic, and we get that contrast back. There is a before and there is an after. We've recovered the detail in the shadows and the highlights and added the contrast back in. Now, if I reset the tone curve and reset my shadows and highlights and I move down to the tone curve, in this square you have your blacks, you have your shadows, your exposure here, your highlights and into your whites. These squares are separated into the different sections. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a point in the middle, exposure, and I'm gonna try and get the detail back out of the shadows by doing that. And you can already see that the image is starting to fall apart. So I'm not gonna go too far. And then I'm gonna try get the detail back out of the highlights. Now, if I try to add in the contrast with the shadows and the highlight slider, you can see that we're getting a very flat looking image and it wasn't the same as before. So to show you this side by side, on the left, we have our first image that we adjusted with adjusting the exposure in the basic panel and then adding the contrast back in with the tone curve. And then on the image on the right, you can see that we try to recover the detail in the tone curve and then add the contrast back in with the basic adjustments. And from a first glance, you can see that the image on the left is the more pleasing edit. And we just zoom into the tailgate here. You notice that this image is very flat compared to this. I mean, we can try to fix it even more, but you really can't do much even from there. Now, all this terminology can be a little bit confusing. That's why I think that analogy of thinking that the tone curve is a layer above the basic adjustment of panel, and also that the tone curve adds in contrast and adds in blacks or whites or subtracts blacks or whites and doesn't recover detail. The basic panel is for recovering detail and the tone curve is for adding in contrast. Now, this isn't the only tone curve as there is another tone curve here called the parametric tone curve. And this one is a more simplified version. It doesn't actually allow you to change the complete blacks and whites. So keep that in mind, but it's definitely an easier way to change your highlights and then bring down your shadows. And then to get a similar effect, you can also put a point here and you can change it. The parametric curve is definitely a lot user friendly as if we reset this, you can really just like overdo the tone curve really really quickly and a quick tip that if you want to move these points a lot slower just hold in the option key on a mac and you'll notice that you can move these points a lot slower also just quickly that if we select the center you'd think that moving the exposure up in a uniform way would be moving it from this point up towards this way but you can see that all of, a, all of a sudden we start clipping all our highlights and whites so if you think about if you want to move a value you actually have to just click it and drag it up and notice that when you drag it up you're getting a much smoother curve compared to before and then finally guys in relation to this tone curve if you do like the way that you have your tone curve you can save it as a custom curve here you can also create a preset and select the curves that you want to include Alright guys, I just want to quickly show you how I get my tone and contrast in my images and I have based this off film because I really do like the tone and contrast of film. Film has a lot more detail in the highlights than the shadows. When I expose for film, I'm always exposing for the midtones and the shadows. So I just want to quickly show you how powerful these two tools are when combined with each other and paying close attention to the blacks and the whites of an image. And I'd say this technique is definitely a pleasing 
amazing and powerful way to get more dynamic range out of your raw file. So I'll bring my highlights down. The most I'll ever go down to is negative 90. I don't go past that. I'll bring up my shadows to about plus 20 or so. I'll also bring my whites down quite a lot. And then I'll lift my blacks to about halfway of plus 65. Now I always lift my blacks more than my shadows and I bring my highlights and my whites down a lot because this gives us more dynamic range in our highlights while keeping the shadows and the blacks at a natural contrast. And I also do prefer lifting my blacks over the shadow just to give it a little bit more softness to the blacks. You'll notice that this image is really flat. It's looking very boring and I've just lost all of the contrast and the color and the pop of this image. But that's why we use a tone curve. And just with a simple S curve to bring all that contrast back out, you can see that we're back to similar to what we started. But if we go to a before and an after, we can see we're getting a lot more color pop. We're getting a lot more contrast. We're getting a lot more dynamic range here in the highlights and also the shadows. And this is similar to film. Film has a lot of detail here in the highlights and it also doesn't have much detail in the shadows. And if you do like the contrast and the tone and this style of editing, I do actually sell Lightroom presets that are a more refined version of this. So pretty much when I edit, I'll just slap on a preset and I'll usually increase the exposure. The way that I've set this up is you actually get a little bit more dynamic range out of your raw files and I typically like to boost my exposure pretty much to the max. There's a quick before and there is an after. So just quick last thing that I want to mention is I do get quite a few comments saying typical S curve preset or why do you only use an S curve and S curve is definitely the most common way to edit. Even film stocks have an S curve. There's definitely different ways of creating a look with different curves. And if you come right down to the bottom on your presets, Lightroom do actually offer different curves that you can use. You can do a lifted shadows one and then you can do a strong S curve. So there is different curves available. Majority of them are a S curve of some sort, but I think a traditional S curve is the easiest way and it is is the most visually appealing for me. All right, guys, before we wrap up this video, I just want to show you a quick bonus tip in regards to adding that color contrast into your images. I want to show you the advanced technique of adding this color contrast in with the RGB values in the tone curve. And then I also want to provide a simpler and easier way that can actually be more visually pleasing depending the look you're going for. Adding color contrast in the editing phase is a very interesting concept and it is actually a lot easier than people make it out to be. So I'm just gonna come down to the RGB curves down here and I'm gonna click on the blue channel. Up the top left, you can see that we're getting a blue cast. Down the bottom right, we're getting a yellow cast. If I move this point, we add blue or if I move it down, we add in yellow. We're not adding in blacks, we're not adding in whites, we're adding in colors. So I'm going to delete that control point. Now this photo is well exposed. It also has a lot of contrast in the background with the subject being brighter and the background being darker. So we already have that natural contrast from the way that I've edited the photo as well. But if we really want to make this photo dramatic and pop, we can use color theory to make it even more impactful. We could add warmth into the highlights here, which would make this hair light stand out even more. And then the opposite of yellow, a complementary color would be blue. So we could add blue into the shadows and those two colors being complementary colors, they would interact with each other and add more contrast into the image. So to do this, it's pretty much the same as the tone curve here. All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of blue into the shadows here, and then I'm gonna counteract that and fix that by adding a little bit of yellow into the highlights. And then if you look at before and after, that's without any contrast adjustments with the parametric curve and the tone curve, and then also that color contrast back in, and then you can see the after. And you can see that now we're getting some blue shadows and we're getting more warmth out of that hair light. I think we could add just a little bit more to fix the skin tone and you can refine it. Now this tool is very powerful. You've got a red, green and a blue channel. That for me is pretty advanced. And the problem that I find with this is that when you move these points, you're also adding in exposure contrast adjustments rather than just the color. So it can be a little bit hard to 
fine tune it. I'm just gonna reset all these channels and then I just wanna show you how you can get a bit of color contrast in without using the tone curve. So if we scroll down to the color grading wheels. Now these wheels won't add in any contrast. Adjusting these wheels will just add in color into the background. So if I wanna add just a little bit of blue, and then a little bit of red orange into the highlight you can already see that we achieved a similar effect but we could fine tune and select the values we wanted to get you also don't add in that extra contrast if you go up here and you select the shadows the midtones and the highlights you can actually change these values by sliders you can type in the number or the hue that you want you can change the saturation and then you can also change the luminance so you can bring up the shadows and you can darken the shadows so if you want you can actually add in that contrast a little bit easier just like you do on the tone curve so i personally think that these color grading wheels are much more powerful and just easier to use than using the rgb tone curve all right before we finish remember that i have I've left some references to the Adobe website for you guys to check out. There's a lot more information down below that we had time to cover in today's video. And if you guys do like my approach to editing, I do sell Lightroom presets that represents this tone and contrast approach and also the colors in my images. And if you did like this video and you found value, hit that like button and subscribe if you want more photography content like this. All right guys, I'll see you later. Bye for now.